So a couple of years ago, we began uh, working with McTrans Center to develop an integration between HCS and Transmodeler. Sometimes you need to do some things. Um, maybe you start with uh, HCS, but you need to do more. So we've actually uh, developed this integration where, um, where the, the two can communicate. And what we've done is to uh, be able to convert HCS parameters to simulation inputs. If you are a uh, an HCS user, maybe you previously used uh, it come, would come bundled with CoreSim to animate your HCS files, but it was difficult to obtain uh, output from the animation. Uh, for example, uh, why would you need to do that? Uh, you may have for a left turn spillback at an intersection, and the HCM methodology, uh, as implemented through HCS or another tool, may may flag a spillback situation uh, where a left turn lane backs up into the, the through lane, but really doesn't account for the operational effects on the uh, the f through traffic flow. So um, you may have a need to go to something more than just HCS. So Transmodeler actually converts an HCS file uh, to a simulation database that you can use to conduct a full analysis and you can even animate your um, your HCS file. So currently this is done for uh, for urban the urban streets chapters in the HCM, whether it be an isolated intersection, an urban street segment, or uh, an urban street facility, which would be a uh, several intersections connected by segments. Uh, it is also done for stop controlled intersections, uh, two way stop controlled, all way stop controlled, and for freeway facilities. In order to do this, you need uh, HCS 7.9 and then Transmodeler or Transmodeler SE 6.0. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with Transmodeler SE, uh, it is a what we you may think of as a lighter version of Transmodeler uh, and a less expensive version. Uh, it has about 85% of the functionality as the full Transmodeler. The primary limitation is in the size of the network. So Transmodeler SE is limited to 100 links or 20 nodes which is still a pretty good size arterial set if you think about it, but just wanted to make you aware of that. And what I'm going to show you, we're actually using Transmodeler SE, which has got just a little bit different look to it, at least with some of the menus. There are a couple of ways that you can go from HCS to Transmodeler. One of those is from within HCS, simply uh, either one or two clicks and you are simulating your HCS file. And the other one uh, from within Transmodeler, you can import an HCS file into it. Uh, so let's look at the first one where you're launching the simulation from HCS and I'm actually going to to demonstrate that. So um, I have an HCS file here and this is actually a pretty complex one. It is a, an arterial that is made up of seven intersections and it includes a diamond interchange between nodes two and three. Uh, if you've uh, been an HCS user, you'll know that there are two modes. There's the visual mode there's uh, and the classic mode, which uh, for each intersection, you get a page with all of your inputs, uh, parameters, and, and some of the outputs. I'm going to go back to the visual mode, but um, and then the report either can be on the bottom or on the right-hand side, uh, as you see here. And it's very simple. Just from within Transmodeler, you can either uh, click on the little quick animation button once you have your uh, HCS file open or uh, simply file Transmodeler view animation. And so it's going to take a moment. It's going to open up Transmodeler or Transmodeler SE, gives you uh, some warning messages, which is always a good idea for you to check what those are when you convert, uh, when you do any simulation. And um, as you can see, and it's telling me a couple things I need to check here. And then quite simply, um, in Transmodeler SE, we've taken some of this functionality in the, in the toolbar and put it in a sidebar. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to slow down my animation. And then if I zoom in, uh, I'm simply animating uh, my HCS file. Um, if I want to use, uh, again, let me, let me refresh there. Okay. If I want to, uh, to animate that in 3D, it's as simple as taking and starting my my 3D um, viewer and go 
creating a new one. It's going to open up a 3D window. I'm going to go back to Transmodeler and restart in just a moment. It's it's drawing uh, the rest of my 3D, and now I have um, my Transmodeler, my, just a very basic 3D. There are no images. There's no buildings or uh, other 3D objects. I could certainly add those if I wish, but this is just simply taking the um, the HDS file with a couple of clicks, getting an animation of it, a couple more clicks, and I can get a 3D of that animation. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go back to Transmodeler, stop this animation. All right. So that's um, one of the ways that we can take our our HCS file and animate it. Uh, the other way is we can simply open it from within Transmodeler or even drag the file into it. So uh, this is a freeway facilities file that I had and I just simply drag that uh, file with the .xuf extension into Transmodeler and it has converted that. Again, I'm going to go to my toolbar, open the sidebar, slow it down a little bit, uh, but now I've taken my freeway facilities file and uh, converted it into a Transmodeler database. If you've done the freeway facilities analysis with an HCS, you know that it is a directional analysis. You only look at one, uh, one side of the freeway at a time. This will produce the same, also the same performance measures uh, that are simulation based that you get in HCS including the heat map. Um, but anyway, this is just simply converting a freeway facilities file into Transmodeler. So uh, I'm going to stop that. And then uh, just one other thing I wanted to point out in doing so, it's also possible within Transmodeler to take your HCS file and locate it on a map. I'm not going to uh, illustrate that for you other than with this graphic but going back to the first example that I showed and simply taking um, those points that are uh, intersections are nodes one through seven that are shown on the top of the, the top half of the picture and locating them on a map then I can simply take my file and then rotate it align it along uh, the the facility so that we can take advantage of the imagery, whether it's a satellite image or a map based. Dan um, illustrated that before with uh, the previous example, but I can take my HCS file and actually physically locate it on a map. And if you've been a long time HCS user like I have, uh, to me that was always a source of frustration is not being able to locate it on a map. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Dan and let him talk about a uh, couple of the other features that are within Transmodeler.